So far in this course, you have operated the lathe in many ways to produce round parts. You have been successful in operations like facing, turning, knurling, parting, and chamfering. Now it is time to learn the operation of threading. You'll be using a single point threading tool to complete the task of threading on your lathe. You may use either a high speed steel or a carbide tool. See your instructor if you're not sure what tool to use. Either one will work. Just make sure your angle is at 60 degrees. It is important to make sure the major diameter of the part you're going to thread is from 0.5 diameter to 0.495 diameter before you begin. A collet chuck will be used to hold the part in the spindle because you'll be threading a half 20 UNF thread. Load the part in the chuck and tighten. You will need to set the compound rest to 29.5 degrees to the right for right-handed threads. Since you are moving the compound from 90, you will need to subtract 29.5 from 90. This results in 60.5 degrees. Lock the compound on that angle and lock all four bolts. When putting the tool on center, you can use the ruler method when using high speed steel. I recommend using the live center method when using a carbide insert. You can break the point of the carbide if you hit it with the ruler too hard. Carbide is hard and very brittle. Now it is time to use the center gauge to align the tool to the part. Using a piece of white paper helps illuminate the area. You can clearly see how the threading tool fits into the 60 degree angle of the center gauge. Once it is aligned, tighten the tool post nut very carefully so as to not rotate the tool. Since the threads you are cutting are half 20 UNF, you will need to set the gearbox for 20 threads per inch. This is the A S 3 Y setting on the gearbox. The lead screw which is the Acme thread, needs to be rotating. And we want to make sure the carriage will travel towards the headstock. Turning the lever to the left will set the rotation correctly. You will need to remove the backlash from the compound rest. Start rotating the compound rest dial clockwise to the right, two to three revolutions, and then stop on zero. This will remove the backlash and all future rotations of the dial will be to the right or clockwise when cutting the threads. To set the cross slide to zero, I like to use marker to put color on the part while it's rotating. Use the threading tool to touch the outside diameter. Once you see a silver line, then set the dial on zero. Set the spindle RPM to around 100 RPMs. If the rotation is too fast, you may not have enough time to stop the tool from crashing into your part. The lever used for facing and turning will need to be in the center position when threading or the carriage will not move. Make sure it is in the proper position. Now let's look at the threading dial and half nut lever. The threading dial will rotate as long as the lead screw is rotating. Notice the numbers on the dial. The odd numbers are for odd number of threads and the even numbers are for even number of threads. Since we are cutting threads that have 20 threads per inch, we will lock the half nut lever on any even number. Up to engage and down to disengage. Make a couple practice runs to get acquainted with the process. The compound rest will need to move a total of 35 thousandths. Remember, you will take 5 thousandths on the first pass and 3 thousandths per additional pass. Let's go ahead and make our first pass. Start the lathe, place the threading tool just to the right of the part, and advance the compound rest 5 thousandths of an inch. 
place your right hand on the half nut lever and wait till the dial rotates and comes to an even number. Once the even number is on the button, then raise the half nut lever and it should engage and the carriage will move towards the headstock. Keep your hand on this lever, push the lever down to stop the travel once the threading tool point is in the thread relief. Once your threading tool is at the thread relief and has stopped, you will need to back the cross slide out one full revolution to the left and stop on zero. Then manually move the carriage with the carriage hand wheel to the beginning of your part. You do not have to be at the exact starting point every time as long as your threading tool is to the right of the part. Then turn the cross slide one revolution to the right back to zero. Take three thousandths per pass until you travel approximately thirty-five thousandths. You may have to take several small passes of about a thousandth of an inch to get the nut to fit perfect. Once the nut does start to fit on, then remove the sharp point of the thread with a file. Keep light equal pressure when filing the top of the thread. The light reflecting off the flat of the thread should be uniform. Check the mating part again while the part is still in the lathe. Never take the part out of the lathe to check the thread. You will lose your positioning of the thread and it can be very difficult to pick the position back up again. Once the nut threads on easily without too much slop or too tight, you are finished with this operation.